fall of 1961. Got to Howard, and I joined student chapter, the student nonviolent coordinating committee, man. You just got around you, snowplay, rap. At Howard, on the campus of 10, 11,000, it's probably 25 of us, if that many, man. But we became the, you know, thought center of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which was King's youth organization, founded by Ella Baker. So, story goes on, and it caused me to see how I could engage myself in architecture in a different way. So I decided I want to be a people's architect, and that really got fueled after I went to Mississippi. The Institute for Policy Studies, which was a think tank, which still exists, had taken a peek at me, come by and talk to us, we'll support you because you are beginning to think about how to practice architecture in a disruptive way. So I got myself a little storefront on Florida Avenue for 85 bucks a month. I now set up my little shop. I'm wearing coveralls and hair and beard, blah, 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 talking black power. And kids are peeking in, man. They're like, who is this dude, man? What's this all about, right? So I figured out a way to flip the space so I could teach art to the kids, but also have that be my base. That kind of energy caused me, along with work ethic, to see new and interesting ways to build this thing called the new thing, which ended up being an old church, an old laundromat, an old ballroom, an old furniture store, two old brownstones, photography, graphics, African dance, African percussion, grew into a jazz concert every week, a blues festival at Howard. It really started out as me just trying to figure out how to encourage the democratization of architecture and planning into this thing where I got attached to all these kids and was trying to build and create these experiences and platforms for them where in fact art could help them begin to connect to a conscious experience that was Afrocentric so that they could feel stronger, smarter, competent, celebrated, feel like they had some kind of historical lineage and they just didn't get off the boat with slavery. So I was very consciously and conscientiously uh, working to make, create consciousness, but it do it in a very artful way, you know? So, you know, it, it, and we, never, we never lowered the bar on the art because we were winning gold medals in design, winning film festivals. It, just, mm. it was very interesting. Mm. It, was a, it was an energy that created mm. itself that I did not anticipate. We went to New Thing Art and Architecture Center, which was top of Karoo. And I received my first grant in 1968 to do a summer youth and program through the Mayor's Performing Arts Committee, which is the forerunner of the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. And what happened was the city put up some money for summer programs, but they wanted to give all the money to the European areas of the city. And the blacks were going to get nothing. So we did a sit-in in June of 68, right after Dr. King's uh, demise. And um, we protested, and we just generally um, created confusion at the district building. So they relented and they said, okay, write us a one paragraph proposal on a napkin and give it to us and we will give you money for the summer program. So that's how I got my first grant. <laughs> it was me and Topper Carew and James Spate and a number of other people. The fact was the zeal and the desire to serve our people with a culture kept us going. So. When the summer ended uh, in 68, um, Topper Karu approached me and said, would you come to New Thing and be our resident dance artist at New Thing? And I went to New Thing in, in the fall of 68. At Howard, I knew Melvin Deal. Now, he, because he worked at the library that I used to go to in my neighborhood, and and he encouraged me to join his group of 
African heritage dancers and drummers, which I did. The new thing then asked me if I would teach dance for the new thing art and architecture center. They eventually were able to get Melvin Deal, my teacher, to come and teach the dance class. And Melvin and I taught together for a while. It's hard to describe the buzz around the new thing. I mean, there was just stuff happening. Kids doing photography, kids doing printing, kids doing dancing. Of course, we had Lou Stovall and Lloyd McNeil doing printing. My mom used to call me <clears throat> Miss New Thing. <laughs> Because she realized how how much I was into it, how you know how how deeply I was affected by how I saw it change people, you know, kids who could have been running around, I don't know, doing what, <laughs> but uh, probably some unhealthy things, were were deeply involved in in the new thing. One day I was up. Uh, which is now Adams Mall. And I was up 18th Street, and I think I was about nine or ten years old, just wandering the neighborhood, and I saw the new thing. I saw Melvin and them. Um, they were just beginning the workshops, and and what was an old laundry mat used to be where Marie H. Reed is now right on the corner of Calorama Road in 18, right there. That's where the studio used to be. And I'm walking by and I hear the drums and I peep in the window and Dino, which was one of the, the male dancers, the lead dancer, he came out and said, what you peeping in here for? Come on in here. That's how we got integrated into the new thing. And the rest is basically history because I, I, I spent a great deal of my life, time, in, in that studio. I wouldn't miss it for nothing in the world. I mean, I used to go to bed and dream about going back the next day, stuff like that. It really kept me out of trouble. To me, it was a safe haven. It was an outlet to to be creative with some of the energy that I had getting in trouble with, you know? Uh, because before I was introduced to the new thing, I had a lot of time on my hands and nothing to do with it. And I started hanging out with friends and we were getting into mischief. So yeah, once I was introduced to the new thing, it was a place for me to go. And my earliest memory of it is the drumming and dancing. I did start beating on the drums and playing the drums at first. And then they made me sit and listen and watch everybody else. And at the same time, there was somebody teaching me different things about the drum, how the drum was made in Africa, um, how hitting it in a certain spot makes certain different sounds and how to combine the sounds to form a rhythm. You know, um, and again, that, 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 in the beginning, I was like, what is this for, you know? And then as time went on and I understood the drum and the music more, then I, it started to grab my heart. Eventually, we ended up going through a whole scheduled day of, of learning, um, whether it was photography, creative writing, or dancing and drumming. Trust me, it has had a major impact on my life. I'm a musician now and I play in several bands. And had it not been bef because of the new thing and my, and my roots in African drumming, I, wouldn't, I, I would have never thought of playing any drums. So I mean, as a, I'm not a star, but I am a person that's thriving as a musician because of that. If you went there and you got involved, your life was gonna forever be changed. Every skill, everything I was exposed to in that program, still today, years later, 50-something 50, 50 years later, I still 
reflect on that stuff, and I use it every day. I, I really can say that, you know, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, it just transformed who I could have been. So what you see is this constant metamorphosis of people who were changing, you know, morphing and changing, but with a history that often is unappreciated. Like, this person didn't emerge out of a vacuum. This person emerged out of this cross-current of, of interactions. In my youth, I really wanted, when I'm very young, I wanted to be an artist. Even though I didn't do graphics, you know, I would stand over Eric Marlowe, who was like pure genius with the pen, Percy Martin, Michael Platt. Those kinds of interactions and those kinds of things are not captured in programs, so to speak. Um, so that's why I'm saying for, for me, the, while the, the programs were important, um, what was even greater, if you will, was the opportunity to meet minds that were also searching for their own directions. So you never know, you know, many times the life you're leading, the paths you cross, who people are, you know, what they're really about. And so it's very difficult for me to quantify the impact that New Thing had. Did the film crew that trained to do thing go on and make movies? I have no idea. Um, but you can bet their lives will change as a consequence. So just because one doesn't pursue the specific skill set doesn't mean that one isn't affected in other ways about how they see the world. Okay, so I didn't become a photographer, okay? But I look at the world a little differently because I, you know, because I went through that experience.